Crime Church. Winston Story, Chapter 6, A Bit of a Rap. So Wins pays me to go to a course called Numeracy and Literacy. And it's like four steps down from entry level plumbing. It's full of idiot stoners and baggy clothes and a few gangbangers who squirt in my white pride t-shirt. See, it's a daytime cover for what I'm really up to. I'm getting a bit of a rep as a man to see if you want a PlayStation, Xbox, GameCube, PSP, or latest gaming gear. That's my specialty. Fresh and hot from the houses of rich cunts in Fendleton. You know, students near the university. Burgs are so easy, man. Candy from a baby. I've got four computers at home, so I can run a few different identities on Trade Me. The hustle? Well, the hustle takes up a lot of concentration. After I got that out of the way, earning my extra hundred a day <laughs> is, is time to, how shall I say this, party! So I get girls from everywhere, yo. Me and Rat Boy cruise to summer, we strut the beach in pants, good shoes, wife beaters, the gold chains, because only a chump walks around in togs. Just about every day we stumble upon a new pair of girls. No worries about the statutory, and they're in a good mood because they support each other, they feel all safe and giggly and confident and shit. At the end of the day, they will try the most trippiest positions, like the devil's threesome and reverse cowgirl and even teabagging. With photos, of course. We're always taking photos of risky shit. So, like, Party Central is like 88 Brockworth Place. I'm pretty much living there now. See, how it all came about is 88 means the eighth letter of the alphabet stands for Heil, and it also stands for Hitler, and it's all part of seeming like an organized brand. There's rumors that the headhunters are trying to buy up every house in the city that starts with 88, but I don't know, we don't fully believe that. See, the landlord was a raghead, and we crowded him with our chest and shoulders as he tried to get a lease signed. None of us would sign the frickin' lease. We told him we'd only deal in cash. We staunched him out enough that we got the rent reduced by, like, a hundred less than he was asking. So the flats of these garish pink blocks built in the 70s, you know, they're four stories, and we can play Pokemon cards in our fortress for, like, hours, bro, hours. The insane white boys, they're this posse from Papua Nui. They were the first to move in and they strapped ladders and ropes to the roofs and sides of the flats with tie-downs and straps so that we can crawl from window to window like a pirate ship. So like the IWBs, the insane white boys, they've been swallowed by the faster rising Brockworth birds, which has united pretty much all white boy cliques. We've got skinheads that visit from Gore and Greymouth and Blenheim. Sometimes we get the honour, like serious honour, of having a proper, legit Fourth Reich officer collecting trivia money for us, for which we stand to attention, no matter how frickin' stoned. These people have cold eyes you can't see into. They're fearless, those Reichs. And I want to impress these dudes. See, I've been spitballing about kid, you know... Oh, how shall I say this? Right, it's just spitballing, okay? It's just like, I don't know, just like tossing ideas up in the air, but I seriously want to kill that Chong motherfucker. Or maybe Jade Slattery, even though he's worth less points because he's white. I just want to get a reputation going, okay? I have to let people know I'm not just some kid no more. I have got career ambitions. You know, Anushka... She actually walks past once with like this f- Somalianese friend from the mosque. And picking out from behind my Dixie flag curtains, I can tell she's thinking of coming in and saying, what's up? You know, the way she's fingering her cell phone, she knows I live here. She wants to text me. How you been? I imagine her voice asking, you look so different. Those tats, they're not real, are they? I can imagine her asking with a note of hope in her voice as if I might come back in from the cold. And you know what? Then she walks on. So, there's like an endless washing machine of white boys and wife beaters at 88 Brockworth. There are families and the neighbouring houses, but they keep their heads low so that they don't don't get bottles thrown at them. We are shirtless. We are tribal island wild men. People call the cops on us all the time. Sometimes they even call the fire department. <laughs> they squirt us with their hose while we biff bottles at them. <laughs> 
At least once a month is a bonfire and a shopping trolley in our driveway. We dance around a shirtless. Where the wild things are, that book Mumsy used to read to me, that's me, yo. And I'm the kid in it who's happy to be away from home because I finally found my fucking tribe. So, you know, like, each day is like fistfires and fireworks and exploding speakers and crates of beer and eight dollar boxes of fish and chips as big as pillows, you know, like, just like spreading like bombs of fish and chips across the floor. And still the girls come to party with the bad boys. <laughs> Me and my friends, we all head towards the Hundy Club. 100 days, 100 nights. So, like, you know, pursuing this Hundy Club thing with a Hundy Days and a Hundred Girls, it's a Monday morning in October when I finger my 40th giggling, shivering little naughty girl. This Chinese chicky from Avonside, don't tell the boys, <laughs> probing under her kilt, pulling off her belt with my teeth, 40 fingerings, 23 penetrations, and licking the tangy, salmony sashimi of another 33 girls. <laughs> Each day I get up late, I smoke a gun, I make a little money, scamming dumbasses on trade me, I bang bitches, I am tunneling towards hell, and you know what? It's warm down here. It's warm down here near hell, and I reckon I ought to stay. I even text that Mona chick, because... I don't know, sex with somebody when you're stoned is the best. And I have been secretly fantasizing about a piece of that. I fantasize about my brother's whole life, actually. You know, he was the first Pathfinder. He carved a trail in crime and crime church, man. He showed me a way out of suburbia. And Marty, I don't know, man. He's got, like, all these connections to, like, the early 90s and the 80s and shit. I don't know. Old school's not the right word, but, like, he knows old school. Like, he's connected to old school. So, partying on Tuesdays, tanning beaver pellets three times a week, and smoking spots of wheat oil off the stove for breakfast and dinner, paid for by wins. Most of a year, it passes pretty quick. Like, I don't even notice the seasons go by and shit. I'm a man now. I can buy as much Dragon Ball Z cards as I fucking want. I get blooded one night when 50 of us are doing fight club on the driveway around a burning pile of rubbish and tyres. We all got tea towels wrapped tightly around our knuckles. We box in our boxer shorts. Every move when you fight someone, every move is allowed except kicks to the nuts and biting. Rat Boy's name is drawn from a helmet at, sign at the same time as mine, so I have to fucking fight him. Through the flames, Rat Boy comes at me, desperate and hungry and mad at his pointless life. He tackles me and I knock my head on the tarmac and I go to sleep for a minute and everyone goes, Oh! But you know what? When they pull me to my feet, Rat Boy is walking away. Finish it, orders the shot caller. His name is Ballback, and he's got only little shards of teeth left in his mouth, scars crawling all over his scalp that change colour to show what mood he's in. You don't second guess shot callers. I lumber past the burning trolley to where Rat Boy is, picking up a pallet as I go. I smash my best friend's skull with 20 kilos of wood and my cheering tribesmen wrap their arms around me and hold me up near heaven.